Hey guys, Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel. Before I start this video, I just want to ask you to please excuse any noises that you hear in the background. Grant and the boys are around and there's probably going to be some ambient noise and I apologize if that's distracting. So jumping into my faves and fails for December. In terms of fails, I would have to say Christmas was a fail. <laughs> and it's all my own fault. So as you guys know, a month before Christmas, we bought a business. So we've been finding our feet in that business. I have had a lot more work to do and Christmas was just the last thing on my mind. I did ask the boys, did they want decorations? I didn't mind putting up decorations for them. Generally, Daniel's the one who's interested in that. And both of them said, they just weren't bothered this year. They just didn't really care. So I thought, sweet, I'm not gonna do the decorations. I kind of got my head in the game right before Christmas and I got the food in and I did get presents for the boys but Christmas was just a bit of a damp squib. I think the boys genuinely didn't care about all the Christmassy stuff but then when Christmas Day actually happened and it wasn't there I think they were a bit like ah oh, hmm and I kind of felt really bad that I'd missed the opportunity to make a fuss and to spoil them and kind of go all out and celebrate really. We had friends to stay and we had a good time visiting with them but it was kind of almost like just another ordinary day so it was a bit of a fail. I had some mixed emotions, I had regret that I hadn't kind of like done anything and I also had a bit of resentment because it turns out if mama doesn't Christmas, nobody Christmases. Like why is it all on my shoulders anyway? I think because everyone else genuinely said they just didn't care because I was like I'll do it if you want me to do it, but no one said that they cared enough for me to do it and then they clearly didn't care enough to do it themselves. But then, I don't know, it just was a bit of a washout really and I feel bad about it, especially because it's probably the last Christmas with Daniel still living at home and I just feel like I could have done more. It wasn't that it was a bad Christmas, it just was almost like it wasn't Christmas. Which normally I would love because you guys know it's not my favorite time of year but when it actually happened and I finally got to not do Christmas like I kind of always want to it kind of sucked. Anyway moving on to some favorites now. First favorite I want to mention is a place called Armadillo Cafe. So in my video where I talked about buying our business I mentioned that while we were waiting for settlement to happen and the, the funds to be transferred, we went for lunch. So we found this place called Armadillo Cafe to have lunch and I walked in and I started looking at the menu and as is usually the case, there's all these things that I couldn't eat. They did have calamari on the menu and it was gluten free, but generally that means they use gluten free flour and in it is either maize starch or potato starch or both and I can't eat those things. So we were kind of looking and discussing and one of the waiters came up to us and he was like, I actually thought it was the owner of the place. He came out and he was like, what can we get you today? And I asked him what is in the gluten-free calamari because I thought if it isn't dusted with gluten-free flour and it's just like grilled calamari, then I could eat that. So he ran back into the kitchen. He came out with a bag of flour. He said, this is what we use to kind of batter the calamari with. And I read it and there were ingredients I couldn't eat. So I said, oh, never mind, I can't eat that. Normally that would be the end of it. This happens a lot at restaurants. There's so many things I can't eat. It's not their fault that I have such a restricted and limited diet that normally that would just be the end of it. But he said, no, what can we make you? Like, can we do this? Can we do that? He said, what about if I did the calamari just plain on its own? We can do a salad for you. And I said, that would be wonderful, thank you. So we sat down to have our lunch. I can't remember what Grant ordered. And he came out with this delicious salad it was so good and it had seasoned grilled calamari on top and it was just so delicious and he was so attentive and really wanted to make sure that we were happy and that I could enjoy my lunch and even while we were sitting there I was like going onto Facebook to leave a positive review because we had such a good experience there and then it turned out right at the end of our visit as we were leaving he said it was his first day at work and he was not the owner of the place he was a waiter so I just wanted to mention Armadillo Cafe I will leave a link down below but we had such good service there and the food was so delicious and it was just a really good experience that I wanted to talk about. 
Next up, I have to mention Rebalance as a favorite. So that is the business that we bought a month ago or just over a month ago, about five, six weeks ago. We bought an online store and we have been trading ever since and things were crazy right before Christmas. It was hectic. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a learning curve. And that's the thing about being an adult. When you're a child, the younger you are, the more time you spend on a learning curve. Like the younger you are, the more you're learning all the time. And the older you are, the less time you spend on a learning curve. And it can be extremely uncomfortable to be forced onto a learning curve and to have to learn a lot of new things at once. Sometimes not even at a pace that you would prefer. It's just information coming at you or things that you have to learn and there's pressure. And it's not always fun, but it's so good for you. And so that's been really good to be learning lots of things, to be doing lots of new things and to be finding our feet in our business. It's been wonderful to have the extra income and to have plans and exciting goals to work towards. It's definitely been a favorite in the month of December. So how am I balancing everything with all this extra work and things to do? I am doing something called block scheduling and I'm gonna make a whole video about it because it has absolutely changed my life. It's amazing. But I found out about block scheduling through a YouTube video that came up as a suggested video by Jordan from Fun Cheap or Free, I think it's called, her channel. I will link her video down below where she talks about block scheduling. It has been amazing. Like I said, I'll make a whole new video about it and I've even got the boys and Grant on a block schedule of their own during the holidays so that we can all have some semblance of sanity and order in our home. Next up, I wanna talk about this stuff or these little goodies. These are maple coconut almonds from Pack and Save. They are so delicious. I've had to stop buying them. This is the last of them. I'm kind of hoarding the last few of them as a treat and then I need to stop buying and stop eating them because although they are maple coconut, I'm sure there's probably sugar in there, they are so tasty and I've really been enjoying those as an occasional snack in the afternoon. Next up, I want to talk about a couple of makeup items. So one of the things that I was enjoying in December is the eyeshadow combination that I have on my lids right now, specifically the shiny part. And what it is, is City Color Rose Gold in a little pot. I tried to find a link to it and I couldn't, I'm sorry. So it is a cream shadow and then I apply that with this brush. It's kind of dirty. So I kind of smear that onto my lid with this brush and then I kind of set it with this which is a pigment that I mixed. So I had a white loose pigment like a yeah like a really shiny white one and I had like a darker copper one and I mixed them together to make this sort of rose gold loose pigment years and years ago. So I just take the same brush, dip it into that, shake off the excess and then just kind of like set it. So that is the combination I've been enjoying in December. Just a really shiny metallic rose gold look on my lids. I've also been enjoying this palette, which is the Inika Brow Define Palette in Chestnut. This is a product that we sell in our store. So Inika is organic and natural makeup and this brow palette comes in chestnut and amber. So as you can see, it has a teeny tiny little brush and a little spoolie. And I use the brush to apply the wax, which is this one up there. So I apply that onto my brows and then I use the brush, the e.l.f. brush that I normally use to do my brows to apply this powder. You can do both. This one tends to look a bit warm on me, but it comes with both so you can do like a 3D brow effect. And then once I've done the wax and the powder, I use the teeny tiny little spoolie to kind of comb through it. I showed it in a vlog recently when I did like a get ready with me. I did my makeup, or I did my brows anyway, and I showed how I used the palette. It's just been so good and I've been so enjoying it. So I just wanted to mention that. I know Anika makeup is not cheap, but I'm interested in exploring more natural makeup and things that are safer to use. And that is one that I started with because as you can see, it says tester on it. And it was just among the things I got when we bought the store. So I thought I'd give it a go and I've really been liking it. Another product that we carry that I wanted to mention is the Shakti acupressure ring 
You guys may have heard of Shakti acupressure mats. They like foam mats that you roll out and they've got lots of little spikes on them and you lie on it and it's supposed to be really relaxing and helps with lymphatic drainage and all kinds of things. We do sell the mats. We have the light, regular and advanced and the bags for them to go in. But I noticed in the stock these rings and Grant said he wanted to try them out. And when I first saw what it was about, basically, so as you can see, it's all these little wires and what you do is you just roll them onto your fingers and it's quite tight and that's all you do is you just roll it up and down your fingers and I was like really like you're just making things up now when I first saw it so Grant wanted to try it he broke one out and started using it and while we were watching TV I started playing with it it is so amazing like while you're watching TV you're literally just doing this up and down your fingers just kind of it's something fun to fiddle and play with but it is so relaxing i have no idea how it works that rolling it up and down your fingers can make your whole body relax so much it's amazing so i better stop now i'm gonna fall asleep i was doing that while we were watching tv and i said to grant i can't keep my eyes open i need to go to bed and he said the same because he'd also been playing with it they are so good normally if you give yourself a hand massage like i don't find that relaxing to sit there and like give myself a massage because half of me is getting a massage but half of me is actually giving a massage and I don't find giving a massage relaxing but this just fiddling and playing is kind of soothing and relaxing anyway but I guess the acupressure of going up and down your fingers like that it just does something it is so relaxing and I highly recommend it as always everything linked down below those are $9.90 and worth every penny Another product I was enjoying in December is not something that I sell. It was something that was sent to me by a subscriber. So thank you Mia for my perfectly posh big chunk bar in Poppy Love. I mentioned this in my empties. I don't have it to show you because I've used it all up. I'll see if I can find a picture and put it on the screen. It was a big chunky bar of soap and it had I think apricot kernels and poppy seeds in it. So as you rub it on your skin it kind of exfoliates. Like I said I talked about it in my empties video which I will link over here. It just had the loveliest fragrance. If I opened the door to the shower, I could smell the fragrance. And it kind of left a fragrance on your skin. So later on, if you like went up close to your skin, you could smell it. And I just really, really enjoyed it. So I wanted to mention it. So thank you, Mia, for sending me that soap. I really liked it. Something else that I discovered, or not discovered, but started using in December that I really enjoyed is the voice command feature on my phone. Now, I'm not talking about the Hey Siri or OK Google or any of these things where you talk to it and it responds i'm talking about literally holding down the home button and telling your phone what to do and specifically to make phone calls i hate making phone calls and i will put them off i'll make phone calls if i need to but i'll procrastinate and i'll find an excuse not to do it and i have found it helpful to act on the first initial impulse to make a phone call so if i'm looking at my to-do list and see i need to phone this person if I just pick up my phone and phone them straight away without thinking about it, I'm more likely to actually make the call. But even so, pick up my phone, press the home button, press it again, type in my code to unlock, go to the home page, find the contacts, phone the person. It's just a hassle and during that palaver, I can find an excuse to not make the phone call and to procrastinate it. But how easy is this? Call Grant. Calling Grant Morris. Okay, don't call Grant, like for reals. <laughs> it's just so easy and it's made me actually make phone calls the second I get an impulse to do so. If I have to call my solicitor or if I have to phone my hairdresser to postpone a haircut or whatever, I just go call so and so and I'm on the phone and I can't procrastinate. I know I'm super late to the game with voice commands on phones and everyone's been doing it for a million years, but it's just something that I actually started doing in December and it's been amazing. Next up, I want to talk about a couple of apps. One is more utilitarian and one is more fun. So the one that's more useful is one called DocScan. I'll put the little picture on the screen so you can see what to look for when searching for this app. It is an app where you can hover your phone over a piece of paper, take a photo of it, but then it converts it into a black and white PDF of whatever you are taking a picture of as if you'd scanned it like on a scanner so useful so helpful we had a lot of forms to fill in sign 
and email to people in December. We were opening trade accounts left and right and it was so simple to just do this with a doc scan, take a bunch of pictures, put them together as one PDF presentation with a touch of a button and be able to email that. So I highly recommend that app. I've had it for years. My dad recommended it to me and it's just super useful. It works well. It's simple and it does the job. And then the app that's more fun is called What The Forecast and my friend Cammy told me about this. And it is a weather app. Again, I'll put the icon on the screen. And it's just fun because it's very cheeky and kind of random. So if I'm opening my location and reading the forecast, it says the sky can't stand you today. So I'll just cover up my location. That is what it looks like. It just tells you what your weather is doing. So if I go to other locations, I'll go to where my friend Leith is. And even the loading screen is just so random. So it says cold like accidentally dipping your balls in clogged toilet water. Ew. So it is kind of inappropriate and you can choose if you want swearing or not. But I just think it's so funny and it's just fun to have a look at and you can kind of refresh it and change what it says. So if I just refresh that it says this freaking cold weather is going to drain the freaking life out of you in ways words can't describe. I mean to be fair it's minus eight there at the moment. I, I like just going and looking at different locations. So if I look at Cape Town where my dad is it says it's a good night for spelunking you know if there was a freaking cave or some crap is there a cave if i refresh that it says the clouds would prefer if you didn't gaze at the stars it makes them jealous i mean that's not like telling you what the weather's doing except that now you know it's cloudy but it's just funny it makes me laugh and it's so random and i just thought maybe one of you would enjoy it too what is it doing in ireland where my mum is it's going to feel like you got kicked in the twigs and berries when you step outside. It's two degrees, so there you go. Okay, moving on to some YouTube videos. I've been watching less YouTube lately just because I've had less time, but of course we've had Christmas and New Year and I had some downtime. And I was binge watching Michael McIntyre's Send to All. So Michael McIntyre does a show on the BBC, which obviously we don't get here, but one segment of the show is called Send to All and he has a celebrity and he gets their phone and he makes up some weird random funny text and he just sends it to everyone in their contacts. Like it can be their closest friends, it can be their hairdresser, it can be the headmaster of their children's school. It will just go to everyone. And then later in the show, he reads some of the responses he got. And it's so funny and I've just really been enjoying those. I've just kind of binge watched all of them. So I will link the specific playlist down below of the Send to All segments that are on the BBC YouTube channel. So go and check them out and have a laugh. I don't know who almost any of the celebrities are, but you don't need to, it's still funny. Michael McIntyre is my favorite comedian anyway. And then I have two YouTube channels to mention that I've been enjoying. One is Jordan Cheyenne. She is a single mom. She's into law of attraction. She's so positive and upbeat and enthusiastic. And I just really enjoy her take on life and the way she presents her videos. And I mean, she's gorgeous as well and I was watching a lot of her stuff, so I highly recommend her channel. And then the other YouTube channel that I discovered is called Dr. Mike. So he's a medical doctor. First of all, he's friggin' adorable. He's so attractive and he's just down to earth. I like his way of presenting. I like the way he's kind of, he can laugh at himself and he can just talk really basically and down to earth about medical stuff. And I was enjoying his videos. He goes on the streets and he asks people if they have any medical questions. He does reactions to, so he'll watch ER or Scrubs or Grey's Anatomy and react to it and say like how realistic it is or not. And he also answers people's questions that they send to him. So those are just fun videos and I highly recommend his channel. And I think that's all I have in terms of favorites from December. I feel like that was a lot. I'd love to know what things you were enjoying in December, so leave me a comment down below saying something that was a favorite for you. I would really like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.